Welcome back to another episode of 5 a.m. Theology. So, Chris, we got to a point this week in our reading where uh, the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke all record the same event, and that's where Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up to the mountain where Jesus is transfigured, meaning that they saw his glory and that he was indeed God. But it's what happens right after this that I always find curious. Jesus and the three come down from the mountain and they find a large crowd around the other disciples and the teachers of the law are there too. And they're arguing. Jesus asks them what they're arguing about. And then a man steps forward and says he brought his son to the disciples because his son was possessed by an evil spirit. And he wanted the disciples to cleanse him of the evil spirit, but they weren't able to do it. So there's some back and forth, but then Jesus drives the spirit out of the boy himself. Yeah, the disciples couldn't perform the exorcism, and they asked Jesus in private why they couldn't. Now, Jesus had previously sent them out to preach to people to repent, and he gave them the authority to drive out demons, which they had done back then. But this time they weren't able to, and they want to know why, which is legit. You would wonder why. Why could I do it before? Why can't I do it now? Do I not have that authority or whatever? But Mark 9, 29 records Jesus saying, and this is the reason he says they couldn't, he says, this kind, meaning the demon, can come out only by prayer. Rose, I'm like you, it does make you scratch your head. Like, what does this mean? Matthew records Jesus's answer a little bit differently. In Matthew 17, verses 20 and 21, Jesus tells his disciples they couldn't cast out the demon, and here's the the verses, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And Luke doesn't record this private conversation between Jesus and his disciples at all. But it makes you scratch your head. It really does. Now, the first thing I think you think about is why the two different answers from Jesus. But you can really easily account for Matthew and Mark saying Jesus kind of said two different things. Matthew was there and Mark got his information from Peter, who was also there. So they're both eyewitness accounts. Mark does record Jesus lamenting about their little faith, but he does it in front of other people, not in private. Mark says it happens with the other people around. So this is really just a case of two witnesses seeing things slightly different. I mean, ask any policeman. My husband was a policeman for 32 years. Ask him when he asks witnesses about a car crash, and he'll tell you it happens all the time. They just see things a little different. So that really wasn't an issue at all because they both really mean the same thing. The big issue is why weren't they able to cast out the demon? And what did Jesus mean that this demon could only come out by prayer and that they couldn't do it because they didn't have enough faith? Chris, is Jesus condoning the word of faith movement? (laughs) <laughs> well, we certainly know that that isn't the case since the word of faith movement is heresy, but Jesus's answer can make us, like I said, scratch our heads. It's no accident that this happens right after Jesus's transfiguration. Peter, James, and John had just witnessed the power and glory of God and of Jesus. Then they come down and the other disciples can't cast out a demon. Jesus has given them that authority, as we said before, but that doesn't mean that they could just do it without any dependence on God. After all, it wasn't really them casting out the demons. It was God working through them. They needed to depend on him. Absolutely. And that makes sense then why Jesus says this kind of demon can only come out by prayer. They hadn't prayerfully gone to God in humility and total dependence. They were acting in their own strength and their own ability. Think of it this way. God has called some men to be pastors and to preach the word of God to their congregations. If you talk to solid biblical godly pastors, there's no doubt that much of their sermon prep includes time spent in prayer. And the reason is that while God has given them the ability to pastor, their power and effectiveness comes from God, and they need to be totally dependent on them. Chris, you and I do this whenever We write podcast episodes, books, Bible study lessons. We go to God in gratitude and humility 
for the precious gift he's given us. And we acknowledge that apart from him, we can do nothing. Definitely. A person's effectiveness in any ministry is directly related to their dependence on God. And since you mentioned the Word of Faith movement, well, they're a great example of a ministry that's not completely dependent on God. They're acting in their own strength and their own hubris, which is why they're a heretical train wreck. And we should point out that an effective ministry has nothing to do with numbers. It has to do with furthering the kingdom of God. But Rose, that does lead us to another head scratcher. Word of faith says that you can do anything, heal someone, gain riches, even bring someone back from the dead if you have enough faith. Well, it sounds like in that Matthew passage that Jesus is saying the same thing. He says with enough faith, you can move mountains and nothing will be impossible for you. So you want to explain that? Well, again, context is very important. Jesus's words are related to what he said earlier, total dependence on God. Jesus is using the disciples' failure to emphasize the power of faith. He doesn't mean that with enough faith, you can literally get a mountain to move. That's hyperbole. It's a metaphor to show that faith can accomplish the impossible. Paul uses a similar metaphor, and maybe he took it from Jesus's words here in the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 2 says, and if I have prophetic powers and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. So neither Jesus nor Paul are implying that there's some magical power in faith. Faith, no matter how strong, can't let you manipulate reality. Instead, what they're both saying is that faith is effective because it's how we access the help of God himself. And for God, all things are possible. Absolutely. And I love what John Calvin says about this. Faith is a conviction that God will never forsake us if we keep the door open for receiving his grace. There's absolutely no doubt that God will move in the lives of those who are completely dependent upon him and who cry out for him day and night. Jesus told his disciples they ought to pray and never lose heart before he told them about the parable of the persistent widow. And we know they're not in order for no reason at all. I don't know where these word of faith people get the idea that you can get anything you want if you just have enough faith and pray for it. Because passages in Mark and first john make it clear that what you want must be in accordance with god's will rose i gotta just say you know i heard justin peters talk about this and tell about these word of faithers and even had clips where one of them was saying she prayed for the weather to clear up when she was out on a boat with her husband or something like that and i'm thinking to myself what if somebody else is praying for a big storm because they need rain who's gonna win yeah I mean, it's I think stupid. it's okay to say, Lord, get us back to the shore safely. But yeah, I think I, so too. But she's, I was actually talking about her prayer controlling the weather. Oh my goodness. And it's bad. And I, I right can't up remember there with her name. Finding Satan. If you saw her face, you would know who it was. And it's not like we can just muster up faith on our own. There is no way, good way to say, oh, here's how you muster up your faith. The word of faith movement makes me crazy. What you want must be in accordance with God's will. If not, you aren't getting anything. And again, it all goes back to total dependence on God. Yeah, exactly. That's another reason why the two different recordings of what Jesus says doesn't really matter because they're both saying the same thing. Dr. John MacArthur has a great take on this. He says, true faith by Christ's definition always involves surrender to the will of God. So, while true faith is totally dependent upon God and believes that God is absolutely able to move mountains if he wants to, true faith also understands to only expect him to move mountains if that's his will. And that's a good place to end this morning. Have a blessed morning, everybody.